Hi there, uh, this is Mr. Evans. In this video, I'm going to have a look at how I would uh, recommend dealing with the multiple choice questions that come up in paper one. Um, so, this is going to be the first uh, thing that you see uh, when you open up the paper uh, 10 multiple choice questions. So, <coughs> any of these subjects can be examined in the multiple choice questions. Um, and I do recommend starting with paper. The first thing you're going to see. Um, I recommend starting with multiple choice questions because um, it's kind of like a little warm up. You know, you're not, you've got some essays to write later on in the paper, um, and we'll talk about maybe when to, to deal with them. But um, I wouldn't recommend starting with the essays, just 10 multiple choice questions to get yourself kind of in the business frame of mind um, and uh, yeah, get warmed up with them basically. So when I'm uh, looking at the multiple choice questions, it's going to be, you're going to have a choice of four answers. I'll show you some in a minute. Um, first thing to be aware of is that they're, you know, almost exclusively definitions, calculations, formulas. So, you know, so th these are a really handy way for the exam board to test your understanding of the definitions that you need to know. So knowing definitions off by heart is, is uh, really very important. Um, and just, just making sure you know them, making sure you know how to calculate all of the different uh, calculations that you need to do is going to help you massively. Um, <clears throat> if it is a calculation question, I would uh, write down the formula. Um, it's easy in an exam to maybe, if you haven't got it written down, just <coughs> You know, maybe get the figures the wrong way around in your calculator, or you know, you're, you're under a bit of pressure. I would always just take a moment, write down the, the formula, make sure you're doing it correctly. These are relatively easy marks to pick up, but um, you know, if you're trying to hurry through it, uh, maybe you'll get something wrong if you haven't kind of reminded yourself of the formula that you know. Now, how I answer the multiple choice questions, I, I, I try and cover the answers, or at least not look at the answers as I'm reading the question, and I try and work out what the correct response is going to be before I look at the options. That way I, I know what answer I'm looking for, and I can go immediately to the answer that provides the best fit. Um, if there isn't uh, the response that I'm looking for, or there are two quite close responses, I might just eliminate you know, the uh, ones that are obviously incorrect and um, just focus on those two remaining responses. Um, now, if you don't have a clue what the answer is, or if you've narrowed it down to kind of two um, and you're not sure which one, I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time uh, wasting time on one mark. You know, you should be finishing these in a, in a minute per question. Um, obviously, we want to get them right, uh, but, um, you know, in terms of kind of bang for your uh, buck, time-wise, it's easier to pick up more marks quickly on the uh, analysis application uh, essays uh, that you're going to get later on in the paper. So if you find yourself, you know, over a minute on a question, move on, get, you know, do the best fit answer. You can always come back to it if you want at the end of the paper. So here are some uh, examples. Um, and so I've covered up the answers, which the following does not vary with output in the short run. Now, if you know your formulas, fixed costs don't vary with output in the short run. As soon as I see that question, I know what the answer is. I'm just looking for fixed costs. And there it is, answer C. Um, right, the seven P's of the marketing mix. Now, if I've revised, you know, this is a gift, this question. Um, you know, I know uh, product, price, promotion, place, process, people. Uh, I'm going to forget the other one now, aren't I? That's what happens when you uh, don't prepare. Um, but the answer uh, right there is process. Okay, I know that. Uh, so I can uh, tick that correctly. Uh, finally, I should know what payables are. Uh, it's, uh, you know, basically, I think in my mind, right, uh, payables are, are people I owe money to. Okay, well, let's have a look at the options. Um, it's not an overdraft, it's not inventory, it's not money owed to me by my customers, it's money I owe to my suppliers by the 
business, so the answer is D. Um, and so, you know, not sure how long it's taken us to uh, answer them, definitely less than a minute for each. And, uh, you know, I've kind of been chatting over it. So you can pick up some time on these multiple choice questions if you know your um, definitions really well and you're confident with them, you'll be able to get these answered nice and quickly. Now this one is a, a slightly more tricky question, it's going to take a little bit of thinking. Um, a factory produces 120 units with a workforce of 10 employees. The number of employees stays the same, but the output increases by 20% and the cost of production increased by 25%. All right, okay. So um, the number of employees stays the same, but output increases by 20%. Now, I, I know that uh, labor, you know this is the formula for labour productivity. Um, output divided by number of employees. Now, if the output uh, goes up, but the employees stay the same, I should, you know, immediately understand that they're telling me labour productivity has increased. Okay, that's what's going on here. Um, but the costs of production have gone up by 25%. Okay, so maybe we're talking about unit costs here. Um, and although labour productivity has increased, it looks like costs per unit have gone up even more. All right, let's have a look at what the options are. Um, okay, so option A tells me that labour productivity rises and unit costs rise and that's what I thought uh, was going to happen from the clues that they've given me in the um, uh, stem of the question there. Okay, so final question. Um, so, uh, the data below refers to a particular good. The variable cost per unit is... Okay, so I need to work out variable cost per unit. As long as I know my um, uh, formulas, I can look at what they've given me here. Okay, they've given me contribution per unit. They've given me selling price. Um, now, I know that if I've got the selling price... Um, and the variable costs, I can work out the contribution per unit. So I presumably, if I've got this information, I'll be able to work the formula around and work out variable costs. Okay, I don't need the output, I don't need the fixed costs, they're kind of, uh, you know, red herrings in this question. So let's have a look. So contribution per unit, I know my formula, it's selling price minus variable cost. So obviously if I rearrange that, the variable cost is going to be equal to the selling price minus the contribution per unit. And then it's just a nice easy calculation. Uh, 7.25 minus 3, so I know the answer is 425 already. All I need to do is just double check that uh, it's there, and um, there it is, 425, and so I can move on to the next question. Okay, so um, multiple choice questions, um, hopefully should be relatively easy if you know your, uh, if you've got your knowledge uh, in place, if you know your formulas, um, sometimes tricky on the calculations, Try and get through them uh, within a minute per question. Don't spend too long procrastinating on each one. You know, it's just not worth it for one mark.